Lastly, we are going to see the part of other features. This will be the last step to configure our photo booth application. The first option is customize app, where we can select the, an app logo and the screen wallpaper. For the logo of the app, we can upload a file where we must always take note of the file requirements. In this case, it should be a PNG or JPEG file of 200 pixels in height by 600 pixels in width and a maximum of one megabyte. To change the screen wallpaper of the app, we will do exactly the same. That is, we will choose a file respecting the requirements the app marks. In this case, it must be a JPEG or PNG file with the same orientation and resolution as the tablet screen with a maximum size of one megabyte. Both the logo and the screen wallpaper of the app will have a result like this. This is the chosen wallpaper, and here we have everything set up. The selected screen wallpaper together with the logo we have uploaded to our control panel. The bottom part belongs to the frame of the photo which we have previously uploaded. The second feature is customized strip, where you can customize the strip with the sponsor's logo at the bottom and we will add a wallpaper to the strip. The strip logo must be a JPEG or a PNG file of 200 pixels in height by 800 pixels in width and a maximum of one megabyte. If no wallpaper is selected, it will appear in white by default. If we want to change it, we must upload a PNG or JPEG file of 1800 pixels in height by 600 pixels in width and a maximum size of one megabyte. Now we can see an example of the strip wallpaper, which by default is white. By default, the spaces between and on the sides of the pictures are white. We can also add an effect to the image, hereby applying an effect to the photograph, mirror effect, sepia, black and white, or cartoon effect. The data capture feature allows us to select the data we need to collect from users of the photo booth. We can ask for names, surnames, email, telephone number, gender, and two additional fields we can edit to add in an, any other information. You only need to activate them and add what kind of data you want to retrieve. In field one, you can put zip codes, for example, and control only digits are entered. Same goes for field two. If we add the privacy policy, we can edit the field with a disclaimer and include a URL with terms and conditions. It is mandatory to put a URL if you activate the private privacy policy function. In the case of authorization to receive newsletter, it is the same. We have, we have to post a link to the legal text for the user to review. The block menu option of the menu of the app is crucial if the photo booth will be unattended in such a way the users can't manipulate it, avoiding configuration problems. To access the menu, it will ask you for a password, which will be the name of the event in capital letters. If we activate the digital props, you will see faces with different gadgets, hats, glasses, mouths, and mustaches. By default, we have a few you can choose from, and if you want to add your own, you only have to upload them in PNG and try out the app to make sure the size is correct. The screen saver option, after a period of no activity on the app, allows to show the image we want. Clicking on it will reactivate the app. To upload the image, we will repeat the usual procedure, a JPEG or PNG file with the same orientation as the photo booth and the same resolution as the screen so that it doesn't distort.